So I opened it up to your guys' suggestions yesterday to send me some questions, things you want to hear me talk about in future videos. And my boy William Daniels asked an awesome question. I'll toss it up right here. How do you decide to fish your confidence baits versus trying something new? Now this is a really good question for me because 2019 I had the opportunity to fish a bunch of brand new baits. Baits that I didn't have a ton of confidence in. Um, baits that I really didn't understand the power of until I fished them. In this video I'm really going to focus on springtime baits. Some baits that were really effective for me early spring basically through the spawn. This is information that you guys can take as soon as there's open water up until those fish spawn and then maybe we'll do one for the summertime. I thought it was a really interesting topic and the way we have to get there is by talking about how you actually develop confidence in baits. How do you develop confidence in a certain lure? And I think there's really two ways that you can do that. The first is that you physically go out and catch a bunch of fish on a bait. That's probably the most easy way to develop confidence in a bait is you go out, you take a bait that you've not fished before and you catch a bunch of fish on that bait. But that can be hard at times. It can be hard to go out with a bait that you've never fished that you really don't have a ton of information on how to fish and be successful on the water. So the other way that I think you can develop confidence in something is seeing other people go out and catch fish on a particular lure, on a particular pattern, and that's a good way as well to give you the confidence that you need to actually go out and throw that bait. One of my biggest confidence baits from 2019 was the swim jig. Now, I had never really fished a swim jig. One of my biggest confidence baits ever is fishing a standard flipping style jig, but I never swim it back to the boat, right? Like, I don't swim it. I just cast it out, fish it along the bottom, keep it low, slow, get a lot of big bites, skip docks, but I never really swam a jig. But this jig right here, this is one that was recommended to me by Mr. Brian Schmidt, who fishes the Bassmaster Elite Series. I followed him around, helped him with social media stuff on the FLW Tour last year, and he really showed me the power of a swim jig. He is probably one of the best swim jig fishermen that I've ever met, for sure. Um, but really across the country. Seeing him go out all across the country and catch fish on a swim jig gave me the confidence to go out and throw it. Then compounded with that, I went out, locked it in my hand and actually caught a fish on it first cast. Um, and that gave me all the confidence I needed to keep throwing it all spring long. So bait number one for me is a swim jig. And this is something that I learned with that second method. I saw someone else fish it. They were strong with it. They caught a bunch of fish on it. And that gave me the confidence to go out and throw it. Um, and that's something that I did. This is a 3 8 ounce swim jig. Um, this is what I'm fishing. Basically anything less than 8 foot of water, 6 foot of water. I'm going to 3 8 ounce. I'm going to put like a cross style trailer on there. And then if I'm fishing deeper than 8 foot, I'm going to go up to a half ounce size. This is going to work really well for smallmouth, especially on inland bodies of water. But it can work well if you change up the colors a little bit to match whatever, um, you know, style body of water you're fishing. And going back to William's question. When do you choose to pick up a confidence bait versus a new bait? I am never picking up a new bait under tough conditions. I'm never picking up something I don't have full confidence in under really tough fishing conditions. The reason for that, it's easy to lose confidence in something if you go out under really tough conditions and you fish a bait that you don't have full confidence in anyways. So if I were to take the swim jig and I went out and I fished it under really tough conditions and it absolutely struggled, there's a good chance I wouldn't have picked this bait back up again. doesn't matter how well someone else caught them. doesn't matter how well um, I've seen other people catch them. People talk about it. If I don't go out and have relative immediate success with a bait, I'm naturally going to lose confidence in that product. Most of the time when I want to develop confidence in something, I'm going to be able to catch a lot of fish really quickly. And so I'm going to do that when I know the fish are biting. And the spring is a great time of year to develop confidence in baits because a lot of times you can get fish to eat a variety of different lures, which you're going to see here in just a little bit. But you get to see fish come up and eat a bunch of different baits relatively quickly and you can develop a lot of confidence really really quickly is bait number two and this is something i started to develop confidence in throughout the year one because i saw dirds do really well catching some fish on it in the spring but i also fished it myself understood the power of this bait and developed confidence in it throughout the year throwing it and this was one of those baits that i really had to teach myself to go throw i had to put it on my rod and lock it in my hand to make myself go throw it to understand the power of this bait because it's not a bait that i went out and had immediate success with this is the Kitech Easy Shiner, in particular the IU color. The IU color just made sense to me from fishing baits for a long time. Like I understood I wanted to match the hatch, I wanted to get something that looked really natural, so the IU color made sense. Um, but fishing the bait 
versus a standard paddle tail swim bait was something I really had to get through my head because it is a smaller profile swim bait. It doesn't look like much coming through the water. There's not a lot of rod action or movement when you're fishing this bait. So it's something you just have to have confidence in is working, is doing what it's gonna do and it's gonna draw fish to the bait. I didn't really fully develop confidence in this bait until the fall, like I mentioned, but I know this is gonna be a big springtime player for me when those fish get on some sort of moving bait bite, but it's under tough conditions. So that's another problem with fishing this style of bait, a small swim bait, is it works really well when the bite isn't very good. So when the bite's really tough, you can get some big bites, throwing a small swim bait like this. Dirds and I actually did a breakdown on the video where he really kind of keyed me in on this bite was gonna work. Um, and I'll leave that linked up here in the corner for you guys. But he took this swim bait, he took it in the goby color, which is right here. He took it in that goby color and fished it really slowly along the bottom and caught some fish when I was struggling to get bit. So it showed me the power of this bait, gave me the confidence I needed to tie that on and then start to learn it throughout the season. But it's not a bait in my opinion, that you're just gonna go out and have immediate success on. My favorite way to fish this thing, put it on like a three eighths or a quarter ounce swim bait head and kind of swim it low in the water column. A lot of times these fish are gonna be looking to eat something moving and this finesse style swim bait is gonna move even in the coldest water conditions. It's got that flat body, got that really small tail on it. That's gonna keep kicking even when the water is really cold. Now this is a finesse style swim bait. So those flat sides allow the water to come around that bait really well, catch that tail and move even when you're just barely creeping this bait. So it's gonna be a great cold water fish catching bait. Another thing that really helps build confidence in a bait is going out and fishing that bait under a variety of different conditions and finding moderate success. Now I'm not saying you have to go out and smash fish every time you're out there with a bait to have confidence in it but being able to fish it in overcast conditions and sunny conditions prefrontal post frontal understanding how that bait is working really getting a good feel for the bait and how to fish it or for the technique and how to fish it is going to help build confidence with a certain lure or technique one of those baits one of those techniques that i really developed a lot of confidence in for the springtime fishing for me was a lipless crankbait and this is a bait that i've thrown a lot um, in the past, but I've never really fished it the way that I fished it this spring, mainly because I didn't have confidence and I didn't understand how to fish it under different weather conditions. The bait that started this lipless movement for me was the Duo Realis Vibration 68 G Fix. I don't have any more, I broke it off, but what I learned, what that keyed me in on was that I could fish a lipless crankbait like I do a blade bait. Basically slow lifts, slow hops along the bottom because a lot of times when I'm fishing for smallmouth, I'm not out there burning it around grass, or ripping it out of grass. I'm fishing it slowly around areas with rock or debris on the bottom. So what I did is I took that bait, I took the Duo Vibration 68 and I made a long cast with that, got it way away from the boat and fished it like I would a blade bait, just slow hops, slow lifts, and we smashed them on Lake St. Clair with that thing. You're gonna see it upcoming in one of my videos that I'm gonna have coming out for you guys, but that really clued me in on the lipless bite. Then I picked up this Bill Lewis rattle trap right here under some post frontal conditions. Did something very similar on a river system near my house. Slow lifts and drops where a lot of people typically throw crankbait. Then Caleb clued me in on the LV500 bite. Um, again, in that video where Dirds was throwing the, the small swim bait. So there's just a ton of different ways you can fish a lipless crankbait. And being able to experience all those different conditions and see, you know, this bait be successful in a variety of conditions gave me the confidence I needed to keep throwing it to understand what that bait was really doing underwater so that I could keep it in my hand for a variety of different conditions and go out and catch fish. That helped me develop a ton of confidence that's gonna carry over into this season and hopefully I can expand on a lipless crankbait might bite more this spring. Finally, another good thing that can happen is when you're trying to develop confidence in a bait, you go out and you catch big fish. A technique that is really hard for some people to develop confidence in is a larger size glide bait or larger size swim bait. I was fortunate enough to get down with my boy Caleb Bell on Lake Nickajack and we were taking a Shine Glide 185, fished it really slow, um, but I ended up catching some giants down there. And one of my very first fish, like five minutes into throwing the Shine Glide 185 was like a four pound smallmouth, which for down there on Nickajack is a big smallmouth bass in the middle of summer. Then I ended up catching like a six pound largemouth bass and the following day I caught a nine pound five ounce largemouth 
on Lake Chickamauga off the bank. And so having the ability to go out and catch big fish on a bait will obviously help build confidence in it. Not only going out and catching fish, but learning how to catch big fish. Then what I did is I took this bait, already had confidence in it, fished it up here in the early spring with my boy Gene Jensen and Durds. We went out and fished it on the Great Lakes and I ended up catching a couple smallmouth on it. Kind of reconfirmed not only that it works down south, but that it works up here. So you kind of have all three layers of that, right? You go out and throw it and you catch fish on it. You go out and throw it under different conditions and catch fish on it. And then you go throw it and you really learn what that bait's doing down there and catch big fish on it. And those to me are the ingredients of building confidence in a bait. So I guess that to me is how you develop confidence in a bait. Those are the keys to success to developing confidence in a lure or a technique that you may not have thrown before. So to answer William's question, when am I throwing a bait that I have confidence in versus a new bait? If I know I can go out and the bite is really good, I'm gonna throw a new bait that I can possibly develop some confidence in, especially if I know it should work under the conditions I'm fishing. But I hope with this video what I can do is inspire you guys to go out and try some of these baits. Go throw a swim jig around moderate shallow water with some grass in it go throw it this spring just slowly reel that bait along you're gonna get some bites take a small swim bait and fish it in colder water conditions when those fish are really chewing close to the bottom they're gonna eat a small swim bait if you're fishing an area where you would traditionally fish a blade bait pick up a lipless crankbait pick up a bait that you can fish low slow along the bottom with short hops a, a lipless crankbait gets a lot of bites in the spring and finally if you're fishing for big fish around areas where you know fish are looking up, no fish are feeding, especially in the pre-spawn, a big swim bait will get bites. These were the four baits in 2019 in the spring that I was able to develop some confidence in. So hopefully this will inspire you guys to go out and do the same. If you guys have any questions or comments about anything that I talked about in this video, please don't hesitate to let me know in the comment section below. Um, tons more videos coming at you. If there's any video topics that you guys wanna see, any questions you guys might have, let me know in the comment section below. I'd love to feature them in one of my upcoming videos. As always, thank you guys for watching. If you're not already, please hit that subscribe button. Again, my name is Benjamin Nock and this is the Small Wealth Experience. Thank you guys for watching. Take care of tight lines, God bless. Pursue your passion.